In this episode of Art Loft, we present the murals of downtown Hollywood. This area is definitely for um, art lovers and people that just want something different. Jordan Sonarins, an artist with a scientific angle. Hell You Townbot, a short film from Young Arts. And a visit to the Perez Art Museum, Miami. It's all ahead in this episode of Art Loft. Funding for Art Loft is made possible by Friends of Art, Friends of South Florida PBS, the Josephine S. Lizer Foundation, and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. This project is sponsored in part by the State of Florida, Department of State, Division of Cultural Affairs, and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. Hi, I'm Jamani Anamdi, and from the Perez Art Museum, Miami, this, this right here, this is Art Law. We're set at the Perez Art Museum Miami with no other than Maritza Lacayo. She is the curatorial assistant. So the PAM, this museum is really a, like an anchor institution here in Miami, an anchor arts institution. Tell us uh, a little bit about the mission. What do you sure. guys have going on? Um, here at PAM, our mission really is to exhibit and to research um, international modern and contemporary art, so mm -hmm. art from the 20th and 21st centuries. Um, and we also want to engage with our community. We want people to come here and see the diversity of our community reflected on the walls and through our exhibitions. We're going to get uh, there's so much to talk about with this museum, but this, the building. Mm -hmm. The architecture. I mean, what do people marvel at most? I mean, I know you got you have the bay. You're sitting right on the bay. Yeah. Beautiful sun. Uh, like I said, the building. What do people marvel at yeah. most? When they come I mean, we're lucky. This is a this is a building designed by Herzog and Demuron, the two Pritzker Prize winning architects. And people love to come here. And if they've already seen the exhibition, they go downstairs. They hang out on the terrace. They can have some cocktails. They have the most amazing view of Miami. So you know, we've got a little bit of everything for everyone. So this museum, as, as beautiful as it is, it, it almost feels like, wow, this is for me. I mm -hmm. mean, it's such a beautiful institution. And you guys really do invite everyone, like you want everyone to be here and, yes. and understand and take ownership Yes. And the PAM as being your the Miami institution here, right? Yeah, we want to be the community's front porch in a sense. We want people to come here and discuss contemporary Heck issues with. Porch. Yeah, the best <laughs> front porch. <laughs> porch. <laughs> but it's, you know, using art as catalyst really to, to invite people to come here and have conversation, um, talk about contemporary issues, things that affect our community. Um, and, and we do that through our exhibitions, through our programming. Um, and that's why we want as many people in the community to come here and feel that this is this is their museum. Right. So we, we know we have great events for children. You know, like I said, I bring my daughter and everything. But what do you do for all ages? Is there anything going on for different age kids out here in Miami? Yeah, I mean, we just launched an amazing new project called the PAM Student Pass, and it's an incredible membership initiative. Um, basically, any student that goes to a Miami-Dade County Public School can come here for free. They apply for a pass, and they can come with a parent or a guardian as well. Okay. So they have access during the entire school year to come here and experience our incredible exhibitions. So we're just raising a whole new generation of art patrons and yes. appreciators, you're, you're, you're doing your work, making mm -hmm. sure they get it, there's no excuses, right? Yeah, absolutely. Come on down. And yeah. they get a beautiful building. It's the nice. best building. Now the exhibition we have here is a football, right? Tell yes, a little, what, it's called The World's Game, Football and Contemporary Art. And this exhibition really aims to use a sport that is so you know, internationally recognizable to get people really to, to engage with the work of contemporary artists. Um, this is a dialogue that I think everyone can partake in. We all know soccer, right? We all pick a team. We all feel a certain level of you know, community with our teams. Um, but it's also about common humanity through the sport. And so you 
you see over 40 different artists represented in this show. Photography, installation, video, painting, you name it, it's represented in this show. And what they're trying to do is figure out how everyone can play together. Even if you're different, if you're from a different place, That's if you're playing amazing. a different sport, it doesn't matter. We're all the same and we can all get along. And I think that, like I said, there's, there's a kind of basic um, theme here, which is there's a common humanity that's represented in the game. Thank you, Maritza Lacayo, tutorial assistant here at the Pam Perez Art Museum Miami. Come on down, check it out. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you awesome. for having me. Pleasure. Get hashtag ready. We're headed to downtown Hollywood, which is undergoing a mural revival from larger than life portraits to abstract shapes. This project is bringing color, bold pattern, and Instagram ready backdrops to the art enthusiasts. Check it out. I've done a few murals before. This is by far the largest I've ever done. It was a little daunting um, at first, but now that I'm starting to feel it physically of the actual painting, it, it, it's, it's feeling better. It feels doable. <laughs> and I've been using these sorts of colors in my works for years. In approaching this particular project, I wanted to use these elements that I generally use in my work, but I also wanted it to feel very Floridian, very, um, natural to the landscape so you have the green and that can emulate the ocean or the green areas but then there is a little decadence there's the gold there's the champagne color which is um, emulated in these dots um, and then of course my kind of signature pink organic coral like shapes this area is definitely for um, art lovers and people that just want something different. The Downtown Hollywood Mural Project was started in 2012 and a resolution was passed by the Hollywood Commission designating Downtown Hollywood as a mural district. We were invited uh, by Downtown Hollywood Mural Project. So we got inspired by the story of how Hollywood came about and uh, Joseph Young's vision of a Hollywood by the sea. His uh, dream city uh, was something that we connected to with uh, since we, um, Yummy also is building our floating world, our, a place where her and I can collaborate and share this imagination and this vision. So like Joseph Young, we wanted to also recreate that same um, feeling. And so we connected with that uh, theme and we wanted to project that into a little bit more metaphorically and something that combined our style and our way of working. I take artists and kind of match them with property owners because this is a true public-private partnership. The property owner is very integral in the process. And for this particular project, we uh, had to create a proposal in which we anticipated what we were going to be working on. So in this case, we already had a, uh, already an, idea. an idea of what we wanted to do. So it was just kind of a matter of like, getting to the mural. And uh, um, we don't project. Uh, um, we like to really kind of do everything loose and organic. So uh, that's one of the ways we wanted to approach the mural as well. Um, but with a given direction already, so I think that's something that was a little bit interesting for, for the both of us. Yumi Collective are from South Beach and they're a married couple and um, they do wonderful, wonderful nature-inspired murals. It's wonderful just to see this seamless, gorgeous mural done um, by two people. It looks like one person. All of the beautiful little details that they put into that mural uh, make it super fun and, and very interesting. I work in layers, so I know what the backgrounds will be. The dots are the second background and then the larger pink forms come in next. And there will be additional elements that will come in after that. And um, so I'm kind of working from the back to the front. We just had Vicki Pierre start her mural, and she is a South Florida artist. And, and uh, that mural is going to be amazing. And what's great about her is she does conceptual murals, not just uh, illustrative murals. So that's wonderful. We have tried and true mural artists that also have robust gallery practices. They're in museums. So we have lots of artists that do lots of things. The one that you see behind me is done by Key Detail, and it's a bunch of flamingos, and it's amazing, all done in spray paint. As his name suggests, it's very detailed. Another one of the murals that gets a lot of focus and attention because of its placement is this mural by Fabio Onrak that kind of welcomes people. You have this beautiful mural of three artist portraits 
you have Salvador Dali, Frida Kahlo, and Jean-Michel Basquiat. And then he adds these beautiful graphic elements too to kind of enrich the mural. And so it just welcomes you right into downtown Hollywood as downtown Hollywood being an artist hub. Another mural completed by Alice Mizrachi, and she's from New York. And what's fun about her mural is it's a woman laying down with uh, her hand extended feeding birds, but the sun is setting behind her and the sun is made of mosaic mirror tiles. So that's something that's different and new and really, really exceptional. And then we also have a mural by Kenny Sharp, which was done several years ago. This is a mural that has like all the range of emotions. And if you look at the mural, one of the cutest things about it is there's two little guys escaping from each side. They're escaping the picture plane. And I think that that's just so fun. It's such a nice little whimsical touch that he added. I would say the best part about painting these is the people that come up to us while we're painting um, and they'll just get really inspired. It's an amazing feeling to be able to paint publicly and for the community. I think uh, it, it allows people to really feel more connected to the neighborhood and, and I think in, in essence we're also uh, being able to connect with people as well and I think that's very vital to um, being a muralist and working publicly. This is its own unique thing. Downtown Hollywood is a very special and unique place that is not trying to be like anything else. It's always great, you know, to see from different parts of the city come by and, you know, and just come out and support. And I think that's, you know, essential to, towards the artist and the community itself. I think the most important thing really for me is the whimsical nature of the work. I want it to be fun or for the viewer to see it as something that's fun and light, that it's really kind of, you know, illuminating and magnificent and fun and just a lot of energy. Science and art are one and the same. For painter Jordan Cenaris, the Fort Lauderdale native has created a niche market that's all her own and she is stretching the limits of art. Let's take a look. I am an artist first and a researcher second. All of my paintings involve a lot of math. So I have like a sketchbook full of just equations and figuring out triangles and doing a lot of trig. I had a lot of thoughts of wanting to switch to a science major because I was like, what am I gonna do? Because <laughs> at the time I had no direction of where I wanted to go with painting. And I started really geometric. And I knew there was something there in it, but I couldn't tell you what it was yet. <laughs> so I started researching and somebody mentioned that it looked like diffracting light, like crystallizing in the sky. I was really interested in figuring out what else I could start diffracting. So I was looking at diffracting time and it turned out that was quantum mechanics. And then I started getting more illustrative of actual concepts, so I started going to the black hole and I did the nebula. Growing up in Fort Lauderdale, my dad was a landscape architect and I was really influenced by all of the drawings that he made. And I noticed that I know a lot about plants that I didn't necessarily try to learn myself. All of the house paintings I've done are on this one street in downtown Orlando. I haven't told them yet. <laughs> Everything is done with tape. And I think using tape makes it more graphic and clear. And then I make everything in this painting an icon. And I put this house on a pedestal where there's no other houses around it. And it's in this field of green grass that's all one blade at a time painted. And then once I'm pleased with the way the house looks and all the landscaping, I decide which areas I'm okay covering. I want it to be thought provoking and something you could stare at for a long time and try and figure out what it means. And when I put in the natural landscape, I want it to be both the past and the future that this plot of land could be. And it also brings back thoughts of this man versus nature and what we've done to this area. We've just like wiped it out completely and put in our fake birds and put our artificially groomed trees and just like reflect on what we've done to our place. I want 
to bring these new topics to different audiences. And also interests scientists and people that are more interested in math to the arts. Art is such a huge part of science. Art is communication. Everything is communicating something. So art is just a new way of getting these scientific ideas to a new audience and a new type of public. Uh, this poem is called Lobster for Sale. And it's, uh, it's in the voice of a lobster. <laughs> Um, I should say this also, that many times there are two ways to listen to these poems. You can listen to it literally as my imaginings of what a lobster might say, or you can ask yourself, um, or you might consider the lobster um, a stand-in, um, uh, a mask through which I can actually get at another issue. All right. Lobster for sale. Over here in the aquarium, just left of the fresh fillets. Save your sympathy. Usually I'm sleepy, so usually I sleep. And you think, I dream of the open sea. Nope. When I sleep, I dream of sleeping. Only difference between this and the big drink, in here, it's just us. And every hour, I measure every side. But sometimes I see you out there eating all that air, the two-legged mouth. You think I'm a grocery, but I don't care what you think. I keep one thought, one. I keep it on like a nightlight all day long. I wish you would reach in here for me. I wish you would. Up next, we have Hell You Talking About, a short film commissioned by the National Young Arts Foundation under the theme of transformations. In this powerful example of art as protest, the spoken word fuses with dance to address police violence, racial injustice, and the Black Lives Matter movement. Check it out. We got pulled over for a busted tail light in the back. Told him not to reach, friend. I told him to get his hand out. He ain't killed my boyfriend. Teaching both the theoretical aspects of nonviolence as well as the practical application. Took away a man with children who depended upon their dad. Your history is extremely uncomfortable for America. They'd rather shrug you off or shoot you dead in cold blood. You remind America that they still haven't done right by you. You're powerful, brothers and sisters. And never forget your power of choice. And while your humanity appears to be at risk, remember that you are divine and that you have the power to choose. To choose how you react, how you walk, how you talk, how you protest, how you spend your money. Let's start thinking about these new rituals as we move forward. John Crawford. Here. Tanisha Anderson. Here. Dante Parker. Here. Tamir Rice. Here. 
Tony Robinson. Yeah. I think there is contagious quality in, in a movement like this when everybody talks about nonviolence and being faithful to it and being dignified in your resistance. It tends to get over to the larger group.
Thanks for joining us on this episode of Art Loft. Find us on social media at Art Loft SFL, where you can connect with us anytime. For Art Loft, I'm Jamani Anambi. Now remember, art imitates life, so do what? Live a beautiful life. Peace. Funding for Art Loft is made possible by Friends of Art, Friends of South Florida PBS, the Josephine S. Lizer Foundation, and Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. This project is sponsored in part by the state of Florida, Department of State, Division of Cultural Affairs, and the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. <laughs>